So today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how to do a snatch balance. Now there's a common misconception that I only do snatch balance to try and look cool. Oh, that was not very good. <laughs> but in actual fact, I do this exercise for many reasons that's going to help you improve your snatch too. And over the course of the next few minutes, I'm gonna be taking you through exactly how to do this exercise correctly, what the key focus points are from a technical standpoint, and then how by utilizing this drill in your training, you're gonna start smashing new PBs and mastering the most challenging position of Olympic weightlifting, which is the catch. So let's start off by talking about when to do the snatch balance. Now the snatch balance is a great priming exercise or a warm up exercise for the actual snatch. Doing this exercise before you get into a big snatch training session will sure enough warm up the bottom position, build strength and stability in it, and ensure you have a crack and snatch workout. Whenever I'm doing snatch balance, I aim as a gold standard to be able to hit 110% of my best snatch on a full snatch balance. This means that I'll then have the strength and the stability to warrant me throwing the weight overhead dynamically. So it's a great way to test out where you're at in your snatch. But equally, when you're working out what you should be doing in terms of training session on snatch balance, you don't wanna be pushing much beyond 110% because you'll start to work at a weight then that has no relation to where your actual snatch is. And it could result in you getting injured or hurt as a result of going too heavy on this exercise. So there's two different types of snatch balance which I'm gonna show you now. Both of them are extremely beneficial for weightlifting regardless. The first one that I'm gonna show you right now is called a drop snatch balance. Now this exercise is generally used to build speed into the receiving position and also to improve footwork into the catch. When I'm setting up for this exercise, first thing that I'll always do is make sure I set my grip up first. So I'm putting my fingers where my grip will start so that way once I'm unracked with the bar, I don't need to worry about where it is. Next thing for me is making sure that when I'm setting up, my feet are inside shoulder width. The reason why I start my feet obviously narrow in this position, especially on a drop set of balance, is to help promote the feet moving out into the receiving position. Next thing for me, what I focus on doing is pulling the elbows directly underneath the bar. By putting the elbows directly underneath the bar and letting the wrist sit back, it means that when I'm dropping, all I need to focus on is the arms punching into the receiving position. From here, when I'm doing a drop snatch balance, there's absolutely no leg drive. The bar must stay at the height that it is. And from here, I'm just dropping into my receiving position like so. Key goal when I'm doing this exercise is to think about staying completely relaxed in the upper body and it's just a drop and punch. I'm thinking about standing straight up out the bottom position and keeping that bar over the midfoot when I'm going into the receive. I think about my feet landing at the same time my arms are locking out. In terms of where I have my eyes when I'm doing this drill, I'm thinking about having them just above my eye level and focusing on that point the whole way through the movement. I'm using what I'm looking at as a focal point for balance, so having that locked in really helps me zone out from anything else that's happening in the room and just focus on the way that my body's moving into the receiving position. So when I'm doing this drop snatch balance, considering the key focus point is speed into the receiving position and obviously standing up straight out the bottom, I don't tend to load this exercise because when you load this exercise, it will cause you to take a little bit more of the weight in the upper body, and you'll generally start to use the arms a little bit into the receive. And this actually slow down your ability to move fast into the receiving position. My top tip to absolutely smashing this exercise would be to make sure that when you're taking the bar out the rack, just to think about really relaxing the grip. By thinking about relaxing the grip, this can really help you move fast into the receiving position. The second top tip for me is, if you wanna be quicker into the receive, you obviously have to be mobile in the bottom position. So making sure that you spend some time mobilizing the hips and the ankles before you get into this exercise will really help you make sure you move quickly into the bottom. Final thing in terms of thought process, sometimes when I wanna move super quick in this exercise, I think about bringing my knees almost to my chest as I'm dropping. This helps me move even quicker into the catch too. So combine these three things with that exercise and work five sets of five as part of a warm up every single time you lift will certainly help you move quicker into the receiving position. If I was warming up for snatch balance, a couple of things that I'd wanna do before getting into this exercise is just warm up my wrist. So a nice simple drill that you can do is just grab yourself a two and a half kilo plate and do some end of range rotations. 20 rotations in each direction is a great way just to get the wrist moving to begin with. Next drill that I do specifically for my wrists to warm up would be wrist rocks. 
So I place the flats of my hands on the floor like so. And then from here I just rock shoulders back behind the finger lines to warm up. Next one, flats of the hands on the floor like so. And we just do some palm raises. Combination of these three exercises is a great way to warm up the wrist before the snatch balance exercise. Next couple of drills that I'd include as part of my warm up for the snatch balance exercise would be quite simple and to do is just some snatch presses behind neck. So I'd start off first of all by doing these from standing, just focusing on keeping that wrist back in the overhead position and controlling the descent more than anything. I wanna try and think about staying active throughout the whole range of motion. Once I'm comfortable pressing from the standing position, I go down into my bottom position. So I've got my feet just slightly outside shoulder width from here, and I'm just doing a couple of bounces side to side. I wanna make sure that my hips are feeling nice and loose in this bottom position. Once comfortable we're here, I'll then start practicing pressing again from this lowest range of motion. Again, thinking about keeping that control both eccentrically and concentrically too. Just make sure even when you're doing these warm-up exercises that you're gripping in the exact same position you would do when you're snatching and you've got your feet in your ideal receiving position for the snatch too. This means that your warm-up will relate specifically to the exercise that you're about to go heavy on. So the second type of snatch balance that I like to program for my athletes and for myself is a snatch balance with a leg drive. And this is the one where you see athletes from all over the world loading up and hitting obscene weights way heavier than world records. And it's again, an amazing exercise for building strength, stability, and confidence in that overhead position, which I know so many people struggle with. For the snatch balance with a leg drive, the setup is very similar. Again, I'm getting my hands set before I unrack the bar. I'm making sure that that bar is resting up, right up on top of my traps, so much so that I'm really not gripping the bar at all here with my hands. My feet remain the same in the setup position, inside shoulder width, and from here I'm tucking those elbows again underneath the bar. The key focus for me now is when I'm doing this different type of snatch balance is controlling the dip. So we're gonna do a dip that's very similar to a jerk. We bend at the knee and the key focus here is to maintain an upright torso position. From here we're gonna be rising up onto the toe, so driving the bar back past the height that it's starting at. From here, what you're then gonna do is think about receiving the bar just above that point and controlling yourself into the bottom position and standing straight up out the hole. The key focus has got to be to think about deaccelerating the bar into the bottom position. So if you drop too quick, that bar's gonna come down on you and it's gonna spit you out in the bottom. So like I said, thinking about receiving just above normal height that you're starting at and then continually moving into the bottom position is a great way to deaccelerate. You wanna make sure though, when you're doing this exercise, you're going all the way down into your bottom position just like you would do in your snatch. If not, what ends up happening is you get super strong in this range, but then you get to a super heavy weight that pushes you in that little bit deeper and you've got no control or no strength. And this is where you can end up losing tension and dropping the weight in front. So make sure in all your warm-up sets building up, you're going all the way to your bottom position. The emphasis is on keeping the knees out over the toes, maintaining tension in the lower back, and a nice upright chest position. This is what's gonna allow you ultimately to hit that bottom position and stand straight up out of the hole, just like you want to when you're snatching. One of the key things that I noticed there from, from Sam's snatch balance attempt there is how wide he was setting up his feet. And if you watch his feet, they don't really move at all. And this is a common mistake that people have, especially when it gets heavy, because it feels so unnatural to stand with the feet that close. But ultimately, you want your feet to be able to move even on your heaviest loads. So by deliberately starting them closer and then getting a little bit more foot movement, I think will really help Sam feel a little bit more solid in the receive position. It's gonna feel really weird, but just dips really slow. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, just looked a lot more solid in the bottom position then when he's catching and standing up, which is what we really want to focus on, especially in the actual classical movement of the snatch. And that's the big thing to remember when I said that this exercise isn't just an exercise to do to flex, that you can lift super heavy on it and it looks cool as, is to build strength and stability in the actual snatch movement. And whenever I'm doing an accessory movement, that's what's in the front of my mind. How is this gonna help me a bit better at snatch? and I'm pulling, how is this gonna make me better in the pull of the snatch? Something that's super important when you're doing this exercise is spending a little bit of time in the end position. 
I'd say with the vast majority of beginners that I see that are learning how to do the snatch movement, one of the biggest things they struggle with is overhead strength and stability, but they never spend any time loaded overhead. From a mindset standpoint, this can be quite a daunting exercise because you're about to put more weight over your head than you've ever even snatched before. So one of the key things that I like to think about when I unwrap the bar is just to be really smooth in the unwrap, not be too aggressive so that I can feel the load in my legs. The more load that I can put in the le legs, the more familiar it's going to feel just like it would do when I'm squatting, which is super helpful. The next thing that I like to do is actually spend some time once I'm out of the rack to get settled and feel the weight balanced in my foot. Rushing the unrack and just trying to get the exercise over and done with really quickly will increase likelihood of in that trajectory of the bar being out of place. So we're talking about the snatch balance bar path. What I'm focusing on, if imagine this is the end of the barbell for a second, what we're trying to do is get the bar coming down straight, traveling up straight, and then continuing all the way back down into the bottom position before standing up. And what this is essentially doing is practicing just the final component of the snatch bar path, which travels, if you imagine this is our straight line, this is straight for example, the bar's traveling like this, after extension, travels up, and then from this point, we're receiving and going down into the bottom position and standing up again. This is ultimately the bit in which we are practicing when we're doing snatch balance with the leg drive. I like to snatch with my belt on, so it's got to a 150 now, which is just below my snatch PB. So I'm putting my belt on for this. It's not a must to wear a weightlifting belt when you snatch. I just find that for me personally, it helps me maintain a little bit more tension in my lowest point in the catch. So that's why I've got it on here. The whole way warming up after about 50, 60%, I just started doing singles. I think for this exercise, to be honest, when you're loading heavy, Singles is the way to go. You don't need to do any high repetition on this exercise because the lowering it down and the resetting each time can be a little bit of a ball ache. When it comes to common mistakes for this exercise, one of the key things that you'll see people doing is rushing the dip and drive. When you rush the dip and drive, this can cause the bar to come separating away from the shoulders and it can cause the bar to then be driven out in front with the upper body. So the key thing to avoid this is to make sure you're thinking about being disciplined in the dip. I always imagine whenever, whether it's a dip for a jerk or a dip for a uh, snatch balance, to think about almost like you're pulling back the bow on a string when you're doing the dip. Because at the end of the day, you want the effort on the drive, not on the descent. So keep it controlled. Another common reason why I myself and other people will make failed lifts on this exercise is that they're descending too quickly into the receiving position where the bar's too high. And what that will cause is the bar to come down on you while you're already hitting your bottom position and it'll kind of squash you or almost spit you out of the bottom position. And that can be really difficult to kind of resist the heavy load in that position. So what I'm trying to think about when I'm going down to the bottom position to negate that is that I want myself to be in control of the bar before I hit the bottom position. Almost like I've got the load in the legs before I hit this lowest point so that I can change direction without the bar hitting me having it stabilized and then stand up afterwards. So this is about 110% now of my one RM snatch with 170 kilos. This will be my last single for today. Let's go, come on, stay flat, please. Five, four. That's the best one. Best fucking one. Woo! <laughs> there we go. So let's conclude the snatch bands. First up, two different types of snatch bands. Drop snatch bands and snatch bands with leg drive. Both super beneficial for two different reasons. Drop snatch bands, improving speed into the receiving position. No need of loading weight in this exercise, five, six to five, as a warm up exercise. Great for that footwork and speed into the bottom position. Make sure you're warming up before you do this exercise. Second type of snatch bands, snatch bands with a leg drive. Key focus points, making sure we're starting with the feet nice and close. Making sure we're using the same grip width as we do on the snatch position. Making sure that we're setting the wrist back and down before we go into the dip and drive. During the dip and drive, making sure that we're controlling the dip. Super important that bar is staying in contact with the body throughout the dip and drive. Thinking about that bar tracking on a nice straight line and making sure we're in control of that bar before we hit the bottom position. More time spent overhead loaded with the barbell, it's gonna improve strength and stability in the overhead position. Finally, just make sure that every single time you're doing these repetitions, you're holding for a split second at the top position to develop that strength and stability. And remember, start to utilize either of these snatch balance techniques every single week in your training before a snatch session to develop strength, stability, and confidence in the most tricky position of Olympic weightlifting.
As a special thank you to you guys, for all my YouTube subscribers, for watching this video, I've designed an overhead strength and stability training program that you can do as a bolt-on training program to your current training, and you can access it with a special discount by using the code YouTube on the link below this video. Thanks again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the lifting zone very soon.